Hi friends, this is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing. Welcome, thank you so much for joining me. This is a behind the scenes look at Smash Our Stash. I started looking around and I just couldn't figure out what I wanted to work on for Smash Our Stash. It's free choice month and I have stuff spread out all over and some of this is for a different collaboration and the other counter is a mess and I've just been really cleaning and tidying and then what I decided was I was looking at these tissue box things and those were my inspiration then I went and looked for a stamp not I didn't look too far I just looked at the wall for a stamp that would fit shape wise and I decided I'm going to make some dog cards. That's where I'm going to start and then I'm going to see what else on this counter can I use up, put away, deal with. Part of the problem is I've played with a lot of this stuff lately so I wasn't very inspired to use it but then some of this other stuff I had set aside and I just haven't gotten around to playing with it. Maybe we'll do combinations of I want to get it out of my way stuff and I've never gotten around to using it. We'll see what happens. I think the number one goal will be to just get things used up and put away. I've really been going through and thinning things out and making it so that Zeus can move around and I don't have to worry about what he gets into. Don't get me wrong, he's a good dog, but he marks. He is an unaltered male and he marks. Hmm, I don't think something borrowed is gonna go real well with those. Suede shoes are versifying. Hmm. Well, let's do some of both. We'll stamp some out and then we'll decide what to use them on. If you haven't tried these Catherine Pooler inks, oh my gosh. I'm not saying you need every new kind of ink that comes out and that you have to have all the brands and all the colors, but you should definitely try hers. See, it's really that easy. Now this pad is very, very light and I'm just setting it on here because I don't want it to be goopy on the stamp and there's no right or wrong. I don't think it matters that much if you go stamp down on the pad or pad down, whichever way works for you that you get a good image. Now I've got a little bit of a gunky edge right there. Then let's try this one. See what we like for color. I'm not sure I've ever used this stamp before. This one is a little thicker. The Catherine Poolers are a dye-based ink, real easy to work with. This one's a little thicker. It's gonna take a little longer to dry. And I'm spacing them way out because I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna cut them out with. I'm guessing ovals because I have quite a few ovals sitting on the counter. Ooh, I like this. I do like the VersaFines. They are a pain to wait for to dry, but they do look nice. And we can just set this aside and let it dry while we dig through something else on the counter. The Catherine Pooler one is a little brighter. It's a little better blue, I think. but we'll have two different ones and then we can see. Once you put the VersaFine on here, you don't wanna go back into the Catherine Pooler dye ink because it's gooey. So I should have done a couple more with the Catherine Pooler first. Oop, I got a little whoopty right there. It's bits of uh, lint or the stamp pad. It just gets gunky. And if you want to be more of a perfectionist, you can wash it off every time. Okay, I'm going to set this aside to dry. And then in the meantime, I'm going to find some dyes that go with this. If you do everything start to finish and you know exactly what goes with what, that's fine. 
I very often die cut Kleenex boxes and then leave the parts sitting around for later. And I have more than one set of oval dies. Okay, that's the one that cut that. So we just have to find one that's the same shape that'll look nice. And I think that one will look very nice. So this, if it's a good size, is what we're gonna do on these. And I think it'll be a really nice size for those. Still though, that needs a little more time to dry. Sometimes it takes me a half hour to find a dye. Sometimes I'm quicker. And I just keep a bunch of them in this box right here. These are ones that I was probably using in the other room. Oops, we might need to find some more. Okay, these are all different. This may be the smaller one. This might be a set that only had two layers. So I don't know if I have a perfect next size down one for that, but let's see. Let's see what our options are. I got kind of obsessed with oval dies for a while and was buying a bunch of different ones, but they're not all the same shape. Okay, this I think went with a set of four. I think these were polka doodles or somebody and they, it was four. So these were a little big. We're already using the smaller ones, but somewhere, see all these went together, but somewhere I have infinity dies. I think they're still in the package. So I would have, oh, duh, here we go. Okay, now these are not the same shape as these that are long and skinny, but maybe we can find one that works. No, it's just not gonna work. See, if you buy oval dies, be thinking about that and don't mix and match them. I probably should have just bought the infinity ones from Hero Arts first, but they're not as smushed as I'd like them to be. That's the technical term. Hmm. I think I'm gonna start by cutting those out in that shape and then I could just trim them a little smaller or I could use pattern scissors on the edges and that would make them smaller but I think I only have pinking shears and a punch isn't uh, like a border punch would be nearly impossible so we're probably not going to do that but we'll figure something out because I think this one is the only one that I have one to layer oh we can do this one too this is probably a hero arts yep so we'll take one of those and then we can use one of those right there and we could put some more little paw prints around that if we wanted to fill out the oval and not make it look too big because yes i have paw print stamps okay and then i thought we should die cut these while we're at it too i don't know what i did to this tissue box i think i must have smashed it so since we know that these are a set of dies that go together let's use this one and then we can go down a size i want to pick up that purple and all we're trying to do is use up stuff off the counter that is our goal but i think i also want finished products you know not just a mm, let's make a pile of embellishments and i want to get some of these tissue boxes used up you can die cut Kleenex through just about any die cutter you have, I think. I used my Big Shot because it was handy. Look how gorgeous that is. Oh my gosh. On that one, it's so pretty. I might, if I had stays on inks, I bet stays on would stamp on this tissue box finish. But how gorgeous would it be with just her sentiment stamped maybe right here in this planer part? and then just leave that. That's really pretty. I'm partial to the, um, I don't know what you call them, organic or abstract patterns too. Now this one, I don't think I want that yellowish color right at the edge because it might not go with whatever I'm doing later. And this is so bent up that I'm gonna take it off. 
When I'm die cutting these, I don't worry about whether I'm using every single piece of it. I'm just trying to pick up this color palette and mix it into my room. So one good die cut is fine. If you don't have sinuses like mine and you don't use nearly as much Kleenex, then you can be really miserly. This might be cute to do flower petals out of. I haven't tried it, but it might be kind of fun to layer them and curve them. We're not going to do that today because I don't need any more flower petals right now, especially in December. Okay, so we have those two. Then this is really messed up because my plates are so bad too, so we're gonna let that go. But we cleared something off the counter. Now, as I'm tidying, when I find stuff like this that is actually for my Smash the Small Pads collaboration, I'm just gonna throw that in the little container over here so that we're not working on two collabs at once in this video. And that's just a weird, Thing because I'm a YouTuber. Like, if you're just at home crafting, work on whatever the heck you want all at one time, especially if you're waiting for ink to dry. I'm gonna put these back on the wall, all four of them together, so that I don't have to sit around next time and figure it out. Well, I guess three, because I'm gonna use the fourth one. And if you don't know what I mean by the wall, oh my gosh, I was looking for this for like at least a half an hour the other day because I was gonna make snowflakes with it. What was I gonna, now I don't even remember. I think I was gonna use this on my winter cards or my, one of my collabs. So what I'm gonna do is right now, instead of putting this away in the Christmas or holiday stuff, I'm gonna put it right here in this container so I can use it on the small pad collab. I don't know why I had a die in a package in here. At one moment in my tidying, that probably made sense. Okay, now what I was going to tell you is if you didn't know what I meant by put it on the wall, I have lots of craft room tours and you can see, but I store the majority of my dies on a giant magnet on the wall so I can see them. These are ones I've been using or I found as I was tidying or I was too lazy to put on the wall. All of those could be right. While we're at it, let's put this snowflake with this one. It goes in a different winter set, but at least then when I'm looking for snowflakes, I either find all of them or none of them. Okay, now these should be dry. We've been thinking around enough, right? So I'm gonna go off camera and I'm gonna die cut all of these out. And I'm actually probably going to use this guy right here to die cut. My Big Shot mats are pretty rough and I can just sit down and watch TV and drink tea and do this. Mr. Crafting and Relaxing came in, you might've heard him, and asked me what kind of tea I was making because I put a kettle on and then wandered away. I think these are gonna be cute. And then we'll get a couple of those made. So I'm gonna die cut a couple of these and a couple of these, and then we'll see what happens. I was thinking that uh, the people who have the rescue agencies, they might like to have cards like this. They may be way too busy to send or give cards, but maybe they would like them. And I like the stamp, so I wanted to play with it. I'll be back. I didn't cut all of them out because I don't know how many I'm actually going to use on these shapes. This one, there wasn't enough space on the paper, so I turned it this way. We could put some paw prints. I think for now I'm going to use this one. The Catherine Pooler suede shoes matches my Kleenex box better. <laughs> this one, see, these are a little dark. Okay, let me see if I have any more. Here's some purple. There isn't very much scrapbook paper that has purple in it. So if you're trying to say, oh, I'm gonna tie this with some collections later, purple might be a little hard, but I like purple, so I could make it happen with mixed media or with solid color. I probably don't have any dog paper that has purple in it. So I don't wanna make a bunch of those on purple. Let's set these aside then and we'll figure those out in a minute.
Oh, I've got cute stuff. This is a bag of scraps from when I made journals. So they're probably three and a half inches wide or something like that. Let's use these up so we can use those. That's pretty cute. These are just anything. Oh, we can use that one. They don't actually have any blue in them, but we can make it work. Maybe we should have gone brown. Oh, this has a little bit of blue in it. Sometimes I end up making a bigger mess because I get other stuff out, but I don't have a bunch of scrapbook papers all over the counter right now. Okay, these have blue, so let's take this. Sorry about that, that was a bad sound. I'm gonna have to edit that out. I took a stamp block and dropped it out of the way on the counter. So I'm just gonna slice this off and keep it as wide as I can. Okay, then let's see how wide it is. It's over three and a half, so it's a pretty good size, four and a quarter. Let's make two sections of this that are five inches long. And I'm just choosing five inches because I make a lot of cards and I have an idea of how that will look and that I will like it. Then we'll take these and this paper has white in it so it'll just make those pop. This one's a little fat. Yeah, it's still fine. So because this paper has all kinds of stuff, normally I would go blue or navy, but I think I'm gonna go yellow. I bet Cheryl would love that because I don't use yellow for anything else. There's bits of yellow in this paper and I think it'll be cute. At one of those sales we went to, I got a whole bunch of paper for $5 in a box and there was all this yellow. Well, there's yellow and pink, let's see. Green, blue, yellow, pink, there were a bunch. So needless to say, I've got some extra yellow paper in my life. So I'm gonna go four inches. By five and a quarter. So what we're doing is we're making a yellow layer to go behind it, if I got all my measurements right. If not, then we'll adjust. There we go. And I think the oval, the oval's really cute. Let's kind of, I don't know, cute see these up a bit. Maybe we should put rounded corners on them. I hate to take off any more dogs though. Uh, let's go seven so we don't take off too much. And you might have a corner rounder that's one size, that's fine. For years, I only had one size. This one is in my Amazon store, linked in the description below my videos. And I kind of like it. I like having three sizes. It's good. Just a little more cutesy. Some people don't like rounded corners. I mix it up. Rounding the corners is one of those things like inking the edges where sometimes I put a whole project together and go, hmm, I should have done that, but I didn't think about it. And then other times I just don't think it fits. Like I'm not gonna ink the edges on these. Okay, now gluing things together is not that exciting to watch. So I'm not gonna do that here. There will be a video that shows the end. The only trick to gluing on these tissue boxes is go super skimpy on your glue because this does not absorb the same as if I had a layer of cardstock behind there. So I will use my art glitter glue if I'm paying attention. That way, if it leaks out at all, it's the least glossy product I have and I'm gonna go super skimpy. You always need less glue than you think unless you're dealing with like buttons or wood pieces. So I'm gonna put those together and then we're gonna put them on card bases that we have right here. And I can set those aside and we can glue them later. And then when you see them, they'll be done. Okay, now let's see what else. I think we could do the same thing with this one. This one has a hole right here, but I can cut it 
this way. Different paper pads do different things. So this one doesn't have the border at the top, but it does have a hole. That means we can get a little bit bigger piece out of it if we want. Um, we could do something like this. This paper is not white. You see that? It's not usually how I like things to be. I like them to match a little better. I wonder if I have the skills to just fussy cut this smaller. I don't, I don't think I do. I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, I need a, a shape or something to guide me. Now, we could get some cream paper or some tea dyed paper and stamp in brown and use the stamp and that would be cute on these, wouldn't it? Now remember, we're supposed to be cleaning off the counter, so if we do that, we don't use anything off the counter. And that's what happens in Smash Our Stash sometimes. You take a detour. Okay, do we have any purple? Oh, we do have a little bit of purple, see that? This thing has so many colors. I think we can make that work. So I'm gonna die cut one of these and then I'm gonna put this on it and we'll make a card with that and we'll have blue and purple. And maybe we'll try and get one where the purple bow or something shows a little bit. Things don't always have to match, but it is nice if you can pop out colors that are in the paper. Okay, that's a little bit bent. Right there, we got a tiny, didn't die cut perfectly. There we go, we'll use it. Then, ooh, this will be fun with yellow behind it too. And I got a lot of yellow, I'm telling you. So let's do, let's see how wide this is now. Oh, it's almost a whole card wide. We might be able to do a horizontal, we could do two horizontals, or maybe we could do three verticals with this. And we could put it on a cream if we wanted. Oh, but we stamped on white, so let's stay white. Okay, let's do two mm, five inch sections. Okay. And over here, five inch. I'm just gonna go to four because I know it works perfectly and it'll lay out nice. And I'm sort of watching to make sure, I'm gonna do this one on the bottom because I just have ears showing down here so it's not weird if I cut more off. Sometimes when you're just trying to use up your stash and get into things, you just have to sort of free let yourself be free to make messes and try things that might not work or that you might not love. Sometimes I do stuff for some of these collabs using colors or things that eh, I'm not sure about and then you never know what you're gonna like. And it's sort of good to get you out of your comfort zone. You know me, I'd use blue all the time. But every once in a while, we have to use the other paper, don't we? Hmm. One of my measurements is not the way I thought it was going to be. It doesn't mean I have to recut anything. No, it's just not the way I expected. That's fine. Okay. Now we'll have this one. Oh, see, it's going to be right there. Okay, but there is a touch of purple right there. Okay. Can we move that a little lower? Yeah, then his nose would show. Okay, so I'm gonna glue that one together. And again, I'm gonna put it on white because we had already stamped it on white. If there was planning, I would have gone cream. We can always make more too. This is good because we're using up scraps too. Okay, now let's see what we can do here. Gotta get my fingers under it. Let's use that. So since I couldn't find a tissue box that's that shape from that die set right now, ooh, maybe we should use this. If this is the right 
Well, would you look at that? Now, I don't know how easy it is to glue to vinyl, but we're gonna try it. And I think to simplify it, so this was a piece of vinyl that I had sitting around and I die cut it because, well, that's what I do when things are sitting around and they're bothering me. It's like tissue boxes. I just die cut them in random shapes and then eventually I use them. There we go. Wasn't sure I was ever gonna get that off of there. Okay, now vinyl is a little trickier to work with because it's staticky. So it'll pull away from you if you don't hang on to it. And you'll just have to sort of go, yep, that's where I wanted it, whether that's completely accurate or not. Now, combining vinyl and paper is a little weird, but we're gonna do it. And I don't know which glue is better. So I'm gonna try a little bit of ATG, and then I'm gonna put a tiny bit of Barely Arts, because Barely Arts seems to glue better for plastic and weird embellishments. Uh, Art Glitter Glue has the least shine, and I love it with paper, but every once in a while, Barely Arts helps me with something tricky. Okay, then I'm gonna just smash that down really good. Okay. And it might just look like a piece of navy paper, but it's not. And what I was thinking was we need some paws, and I bet I have in the piles on the counter. Look at that. Do you have navy paws at your house? Here's another one we could glue this on to. This would be good. Can you use that on one of these? I think there's more paws somewhere. But they don't seem to be in this box. You never know on this counter, do you? balloons, butterflies, stars. Okay, we can look around later. But there's some more stuff to embellish cards with. And we'll put this in the assemble while we watch TV pile. Have you seen Jess Crafts? Have you watched her videos? She's amazing. You should watch her if you don't. She makes cards and she has great templates. And one of her tricks that she does is she does all the cutting and matting, all the prep while she's in her craft room. And then she puts them in like Ziploc bags so she can, you know, go about her life and assemble in other places. And if you think about it, watching me run my ATG across, how many cards have we made now? I think that's four cards. Well, that's boring. So this way we cut out all the boring stuff. But it's pretty cool the way she does it. And I like the Ziploc bags and stuff. I'm just going to the front room, so we're fine. Okay, this is cute. So maybe we take part of this and part of this and we layer it on a cream and we quit being so lazy and we want our stamp and we do some on brown. Oh, that's cute. Okay, so mm, the cutter I want's in the other room. I'll be back. Okay. Once we figure out how much we can get out of the brown, then we'll know how big to cut the strap. So let's go five inches because our next layer will be five and a quarter. Okay. Then let's get this as big as we can. My big cutter is nice, but this is a little easier for videos. Moving it back and forth. Okay, let's put... I don't know that I want to glue it. Oh, you know what? Maybe we glue it right there, and then we'd have like our sentiment go this way. I still have some stamped blue ones in the other room, but I just don't like the blue on white. I think this would be... Even blue on cream would be better for this one. I'm going to glue this on. I 
I don't always size everything exactly, right? Like this thing's a little bigger than three and a half inches and I'm fine with that because I don't wanna cut anything off just to make it work. Now, right there, it shows a tiny hair. So my plan was to just put it on here and snip it with scissors. But what I'm gonna do is snip it there. So I'm gonna go just a tiny bit like that. There we go, doesn't show one bit and we used our scraps with it. And we might want one more layer on here. Now, we had some that were probably from different paper color, and I don't want that. I'm not gonna mat it with yellow. In fact, I don't think I'm gonna mat this one. I think I'm just gonna leave it like that and then put something over the front of it. So we're gonna have to wash this. And I've got a pile of, oops. I do have a little folder somewhere, like a clear pouch of cream colored stock, but I don't know where it is. And these were just sitting in the cupboard. These are, oops, is like, remember when I had that uh, card and I was trying, I tried to make a vertical one of these, but I, I didn't really think it through. I mean, I didn't measure it or anything. I just tried to use the same measurements and then went, hmm, that doesn't work. You can spend all day washing your stamps and you can buy fancy cleaners, but a damp rag or a baby wipe is fine. And people who tell you that your stamps will last longer if you clean them better, well, you know what? I'd pay attention to how old those people are because I am not young and I do not clean my stamps well and they last very well. Now this is a pretty dark brown ink, so I'm not gonna worry about the fact that I didn't really clean it off all the way. Again, it's versifying, so it's gonna take a long time to dry, but that's okay. Uh, oh, was I gonna do an oval? Well, we're not. How about that? We're just gonna have it on here. So we'll probably wanna mat it with something. Okay, I thought it was gonna be darker than that even, but that'll work. That'll be great with that brown. Okay, so we've got this card. Now, I don't exactly know where it's going yet, do you? It could be a strip across the front like that. It's gonna have a big paw print though, for sure, isn't it? We'll get some more paw prints going. I have paw stamps and I have paw dies and I've got a cute little paw punch. I don't know how easy he's gonna be able to, to be how useful in this situation, but Oops, I forgot this is 110 pound cardstock. This might not work. <laughs> That's not gonna work for 110. We're gonna have to just trim it down. You can see it, like, it tried. 110 pound is not uh, reasonable to ask a tiny paw punch to do. I just wasn't thinking. Okay, I'm not gonna keep that. Then we have another piece here. We might as well get this ready to be a card too. Mm, I could have gone five and a quarter. Oh well. Then it would have been more of a strip across it or even five and a half. Mm, no more scraps of interesting pet papers. Okay, then let's cut this one to card size. So we'll go five and just to keep it interesting, we'll go five and a quarter on this one. And then we'll have this piece. Okay, that one can go right there. So all we're doing, the reason these are the size, like I said, is they were the extras, the off cuts or trash or whatever you want to call it from making journal pages. And I had bagged them all. 
I would have expected to come back and make cards out of them, but it was kind of a hard time for me, so I took a break from the pet papers. But I'm back in the game now. Now, let's stamp another one of these. Let's try and get it on. My phone battery died, so we have five completed cards. And then I prepped these while my phone was charging. And I think I will stamp brown. There's no blue or navy, purple, nothing in any of these. So I don't think any of this stuff's really gonna work. But I'm gonna stamp out the rescued is my favorite breed. I was thinking about making some birthday cards out of these too. Sorry, you're having a rough day or woofing you a happy birthday or your possum. There's other options here. So I might do those. And then I'm going to, so we're not gonna use this. I'm gonna die cut this with the Hero Arts Oval so that I have ones that can go smaller. So I'm gonna take a piece out of here. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna get more of the purple, I think. And again, if you only have one or two and you want to be really careful, you can die cut a whole bunch. But that's where I keep messing up. I need to be sure that I'm not going with my smallest die on the ones where I want to layer them up. Now, to use these, I could take a, a light colored die cut word like hello or thanks or something and glue it on here. That's how I'll have to use those up. That just doesn't fit with what we're doing right now. Neither does this, but I want to die cut my way through the counter and clean things up. So see these ends, that's probably a lot of why I keep making this size. So I'm going to die cut those. I'm going to stamp some of these and I'll probably use, not this one, because that's a perfectly good one. Um, like this scrap that I generated making those backs and some other things. Then we have these to use. And I was going to stamp a paw on the inside of them, but I use washi tape instead because I have pet washi and you'll see that in the other video. And I think we're doing pretty well. I'm gonna work on these while I watch TV with Mr. Crafting and Relaxing. And then I'm just tidying, sorry for the distraction. And then I'll have the counter a little better. And this pile that was right here was a package that goes with a journal. If I sell that journal, which I haven't, I don't have them listed. So you have to ask if there's something you want, you're going to have to ask. <laughs> so my piles are getting better. Then we can start looking through this pile and see what we want to make out of here and just keep working our way across the counter, depending on how much time we have. Well, you missed a lot of stuff, but that that happens, right? There, There's a lot of good shows on TV to watch lately. Okay, so I've been working my way through some stuff that Tony sent me in Happy Mail. And I didn't show it all in a video just because it, it was a lot of neat stuff and I was still working through it. I made this card with the stuff that she sent me. This is an Elizabeth Craft birthday die. Obviously, you don't have to use it for a birthday card, but if you're interested. And then I have this one ready to go, but I was trying to decide. I do want to keep the gift card holder. And I was looking at my stamps, you know, just whatever you have available. This one would probably work, but I don't really do gift cards for Christmas, I don't think. So I think I'm going to make another birthday card. And I was looking at this stamp. I was going to go vertical just because I did horizontal on the other one. No logic, nothing at all. Now this paper doesn't have white in it. So I'm going to try and grab something cream off the counter or out of a scrap box. I had cream scraps, but I used most of them up stamping the rescued stamps. And I haven't used all the rescued stamps. So I might be making more messes, scraps, and UFOs than I had. Now, uh, suede shoes, let's see how we like that color wise. I think that might be it. Yeah, I don't know if it was suede shoes or if it's the Versafine that I think will go better with this paper, but we'll try this one. And I'm gonna do this one upside down because this is a pretty detailed stamp. And I just feel like I need to be able to see. 
and I haven't used this stamp a lot. As a stamper, just remember, not all stamps are created equal. Some stamps are lemons from the get-go. Some stamps, these old ones, need to come off their block and be handled differently. And some stamps work great after it's ink a dink -a do I don't know what year, but let's just say it's probably been a while. Wishing you a simply marvelous birthday. I think that'll work. We're gonna set this aside for a minute, let that sit, and then see if we can make anything else out of what I have going here. As I tidy up, I'm gonna put uh, this, Tony sent me this piece of paper. I have this paper, but not an eight by eight. So I was really excited to see the smaller scale. So I'm gonna put this in my nature journals and we'll use this later. So that's one of the things I do as I'm working on this. Oh, let's finish these and turn these into envelopes. Is I just, I put stuff away. If I'm not gonna use it and make, I put it away. Now, to be clear, I don't always function like that. Just when I'm working on the smash our chat, smash our stash, clean off the counter stuff. Now these envelopes are crooked. I was actually making them and working on them at the craft fair. I just got a little stir crazy on board and I had this paper with me that I didn't love. I was actually gonna give it to, I had some stuff to give to kids and I just didn't get it done. And it was really dark. Like, I mean, it was perfectly fine for the sale, but to see where to trim on my envelopes, it was too dark, especially since this paper is crazy. Don't worry that you can't see it. I can't either. We're just guessing at this point. These envelopes I'll put in my journal making category. And I thought, I think they're black and cream. I mean, that'll go with a lot of stuff. So I'll use them as pockets and journals or um, probably not for happy mail. I mean, I could put a label on them and mail them. They would work just fine. I just probably won't. Again, it wasn't my favorite paper ever. It was just, I was sitting there and bored. Now I can use either glue, barely art or art glitter barely art, I'm going to have to hold it down a little bit longer just because it gives you that bit of extra time to dry. And since I want to make these on camera and I don't want you to get bored while I sit here an extra second, I'm just going to use art glitter glue. And I will say art glitter glue is probably my go-to, like if I run out of art glitter glue, I will probably order more immediately. Whereas if I run out of the Barely Art, I will say a woman doesn't need two glues. Okay, look at us. We finished something else. <laughs> this one was really crooked. I don't know what's going on here. Let's see if we can make it. I just figure as halfway folded, halfway trimmed UFOs, they're never going to get used. But if I'm sending something out or looking for an envelope to shove some stuff in, and they're actually created envelopes, we might have some progress. And if you've never made envelopes, oh my gosh, it's kind of addicting and fun, do it. Get yourself an eight inch square of paper if you want it to be A2. And if you don't have a scoreboard or a folding board or anything, just take a piece of paper and lay it on there and fold and it'll work. If I remember, I'll try and link one of my videos. I do have videos about making envelopes. And one of them says something like, and another way. And it's literally like, take the piece of paper and fold it. You do not have to buy fancy tools. I mean, I was sitting at a craft fair in a freezing cold room with very few accommodations. I didn't have a table. I was probably using a bin, like a, a storage bin lid or something as my table. There's not too many more. Okay, there's a lot. Two more. But still, aren't you excited we're getting stuff done? I, after this, need to clean up. We're running out of time because I need to film. It's early morning right now, and I need to film for uh, the Smash Our Stash share to show all these projects. So we aren't gonna make a lot more. 
And then I think I'm gonna switch to Joy of Blue. Okay, now you don't have to have a corner rounder either. You don't have to round the corners. I'm not gonna round them all because sometimes when I make projects, maybe they're really geometric, really angular, or maybe I'm trying to make them a bit more masculine and I don't want all the corners rounded. So I'll leave some of these unrounded. And also you can round both of them if you want. There are no rules in my craft room. Except don't spill the coffee. Zeus is learning that one. In the morning during snuggle time, don't spill the coffee. Also, I haven't been watching the camera at all, so I literally have no idea if you've seen anything. In which case, you may never see this video. You can see that I'm very, very concerned about how I trim my envelopes. Which is why they turn out with little notches and things. There we go. Okay. So I'm gonna set these, I'm just making a giant pile right now because I need to film. But then once I make the video for Smash Our Stash, I will put all these things away and be so excited. And I'll put the uh, envelopes in with where pockets go for, this is probably ready to go, for journals. And I'll put the cards in with my finished cards. Once I finish them, if I don't have a specific recipient in mind, then I put them just in my bins so that A, they don't get damaged when I'm banging stuff around on the counter, which I do, and B, if somebody's looking for a birthday card, they can find one. And I do take them, like, for family gatherings or that kind of thing, I will take my bins and let people look through them because as much as I have fun making cards, I'm not very good at sending them. And everyone has their talents. Some people are really, really good at sending cards. Okay, I like that right there, but even though it's super geometric, let's take a little tiny bite out of this. Then, uh, I was playing with this earlier because it is almost the exact size. I don't love it with that. But I was also trying to figure out, I don't know if I have a set of rectangle dies and I liked the stitching on this. So we'll have to find something and trim it down. We can use this paper. Oh, well, let's use that section right there. I'm just gonna tear it because I'm using my big cutter off to the side and it's a little easier. Mm. About right there. You like my measuring system? Every once in a while people watch my videos and they're like, why didn't you share the measurements? And I think, well, I'd have to know them. I do share measurements when I know what they are, you know, like layers on my card bases, that kind of stuff. I'm happy to share that with you, but I'm not going to go back and measure every card I ever made and tell you, oh, this is going to be fun. Then we'll put this on it. Um, you could pop it up too, because you're not likely to mail this card with a gift card on it. I don't know. Maybe you are. I'm not likely to give a gift card. Oh, I would give a coffee gift card. I have coffee stamps, too. See, this is how Smash Our Stash works. It's like a crazy tangent. Uh, normally, I would use my ATG, which I'm quite sure I left in the other room. So let's go ahead and use this. I'm going to put it right there because I want to be sure I get around that gift card and don't glue it in. And then I'm going to go down the sides on the actual card. You'll see. There's a method to my madness. Could you glue the cream onto the patterned paper before you set it down? Sure. Is there a right way to sequence these two pieces of paper together? Eh, I don't think so. 
they're both flat. You don't have any chunky embellishments. You can glue in any order you want. Plus, that buys me an extra few seconds to let that dry. And if you have any concern about your stamped image being dry, like maybe you're in a hurry and you're trying to get out with the door to the birthday party, take this, set it down like this. Don't touch it and take a scrap piece of paper or a Kleenex. You've probably seen me use Kleenex. Put it over the top and use that to rub it down. That's why you'll see me do that a lot because I have years and years of ink on my hands and messing up my project. There you go. So then it would be ready to go in the envelope. You could run out the door. I, that's a really thick cardstock that I used, 110, so it's fighting me a bit. I want a, just a scotch of glue under the edge right there because I don't think I got enough there. And that was too much. It's going to come back out. So I'll just take my fingernail. It's very scientific. There's a pokey tool around here too that I could have used. Now, uh, art glitter glue is fairly forgiving. So that's why I like it. Barely Art might have showed a little bit more. It, I mean, it's almost imperceptible, but I do think there's a difference in the sheen. Okay, there you go. Could put a gift card back there. Now, I'm not gonna leave this in my scraps. I don't like things that catch, so we're gonna throw this away. It'll make me crazy later. Then, probably same here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, this, and pull this off just because when they get in the bins or the things. Now, I don't have a place where I store shapes like this, but because these scraps match each other, I am gonna keep them together. Now we're into that section of dies that I pulled out when I was looking for something earlier. So it's not necessarily stuff we're gonna smash our stash with. That might be it for smash our stash this month. Uh, you'll have to see the actual collaboration video to see what's in it. I'm going to turn off the camera, get some more coffee, and tidy this counter. Now, I may make some more cards with some of these pet patterned papers that we have ready here. I don't know. We'll see what happens with this. But I want to get this all tidied up so I have a beautiful counter. Oh, let me show you. I can't say that we made an improvement, really. I mean, when you look at this counter, does it look better than when we started? No. That's the thing about scraps. We did, however, work on a whole bunch of card bases. And remember, the inspiration point was like two of these. Yeah, we didn't use up a lot of stuff, did we? <laughs> All right, thanks so much for watching. I hope you're taking time for crafting and relaxing. Bye-bye.